iron and coal magnate, Marcus A. Hanna, became known as the President Maker for his management of the 1896 and 1900 presidential campaigns of William McKinley. Financing almost the whole campaigns himself, Hanna bombarded the public with an advertising blitz the likes of which had never been seen in the U.S., setting the stage for politics American style. Worcester Reed Warner and Ambrose Swayze founded the machine tool firm of Warner and Swayze in 1880 in Chicago, but a lack of skilled workers forced the company to relocate to Cleveland in 1881. Warner and Swayze built milling machines and lathes used in the manufacture of sewing machines, bicycles, and automobiles. Because of Warner's avid interest in astronomy, the company also became known worldwide for the manufacture of precision instruments and telescopes. This led to Cleveland's becoming a leader in the machine tool industry. The American Greetings Corporation was started in 1906 by Jacob Saperstein as a one-man greeting card company in his home. Today, the company employs about 3,000 Clevelanders and is one of the world's leading suppliers of greeting cards and related products. The post-Civil War period, with its rapid industrial expansion, attracted further thousands of immigrants from Eastern and Central Europe to the Cleveland area. In 1919, 50% of all steel mill workers were Polish, but World War I and changing, more restrictive immigration policies slowed European immigration. As the Second World War increased the demand for workers, a generation of Puerto Ricans took their turn in the steel mills. When new consumer demands after the war attracted another influx of labor, Southern blacks and Appalachians were added to the 55 ethnic groups forming the social fabric of the city. As Cleveland grew in size and population, the demand for a more civilized, orderly, and fulfilling existence developed among citizens and community leaders alike. In order to develop the stability and infrastructure that would promote commercial development, Cleveland designed its city services along the lines of other large American cities. Police and fire departments, transportation, parks, recreation, health care, roads, education, and the municipal government itself. They all played a part in attracting both industry and the people of many nations to work in those industries. Beginning in the 1890s, one of the first services offered to new immigrants were the settlement houses. The city's first settlement house was Hiram House, built in 1896. It first helped Jewish, then later African-American populations along Lower Woodland Avenue. Alta House on Murray Hill, established in 1900, served Italian-Americans by offering a children's nursery and education program. Neither businesses nor people can thrive in an atmosphere of lawlessness, and so from its very first days, Cleveland concerned itself with keeping its citizens safe. 1800 saw the building of the city's first jail and the election of Lorenzo Carter and Stephen Gilbert as constables. When Cleveland was incorporated as a city in 1836, a martial system of law enforcement was established. In the 1920s and 30s, the Cleveland Police Department was considered one of the most progressive in the nation. In 1923, Cleveland inventor Garrett A. Morgan received a patent for the traffic signal. The Cleveland Police Department Women's Bureau was begun in 1925. In 1929, when the police department installed its first radio transmitter, Cleveland became the first city to have its own station and to be assigned its own FCC wavelength. It was the second American city to equip cars with radio receivers. The city's 1935 safety director, Elliot Ness, reorganized and reformed the police department by forming the Cleveland Untouchables, one of the most catastrophic events that could befall early settlers was fire. In 1829, Cleveland's Live Oaks No. 1 Volunteer Fire Unit purchased its first hand-operated fire engine. By 1835, there were four volunteer fire companies, two engine companies, a hook and ladder company, and a hose company. In 1863, 
the first professional steam fire department was made up of 53 men. Today, the Cleveland Fire Department employs around 950 people and responds to an average 55,000 service calls a year. Early water needs were met by wells, cisterns, and the Cuyahoga River. Increasing pollution from industrial waste and sewage eventually led Clevelanders to build a series of water intake cribs in Lake Erie and over 5,800 miles of water mains. 58 people died in bringing the city's homes fresh water at the turn of a faucet handle. When the victims of a 1916 explosion and their rescuers were overcome by gas, survivors were helped to safety by Clevelander Garrett A. Morgan's invention, the gas mask. The waterworks at West 48th Street are named in his honor. From its incorporation as a city in 1836, Cleveland was authorized by the Ohio State Legislature to impose taxes to support a public school system. The first Cleveland public school was Bethel Union School. Built to provide a free education for the poor children who lived in the flats, this school was nicknamed the Ragged School because of the poor condition of the children's clothing. Cleveland's Central High School was the first public high school to provide free secondary education west of the Alleghenies. Central students included John L. Severance, John D. Rockefeller, Marcus Hanna, Samuel Mather, and Langston Hughes. In 1936, Hazel Mountain Walker became its first black principal. During the 1920s, vocational classes were increased and 1924 saw the opening of the Girls' Opportunity School. Formed to help female students who were discouraged with traditional academic work, girls here were taught vocational subjects such as cooking, hygiene, and home nursing. It later became the Jane Addams School. Today, the Cleveland school system comprises 127 schools and serves some 70,000 students. The need for a university in Cleveland was recognized quite early in the city's history. In 1801, David Hudson had already petitioned the Territorial Legislature of Ohio to establish a college academy in the area. Western Reserve Academy began operation in 1826 at its original location in Hudson, Ohio. It later moved to University Circle in Cleveland and after merging with the Case Institute of Technology, became Case Western Reserve University. Cleveland's Fenn College began as an outgrowth of the YMCA's evening education program of the 1880s. By 1923, Fenn offered classes in business and engineering for college credit. The college was named after Sereno Peck Fenn, co-founder of Sherwin-Williams, and originator of the Cleveland YMCA's education program. Costs were kept low to attract students who couldn't afford other colleges and universities. Today, Fenn College is part of Cleveland State University and offers graduate degrees in 29 fields from law to physics and undergraduate degrees in 60 subject majors. Higher education is well recognized as an element of success in Cleveland. CSU, Case Western Reserve University, Cuyahoga Community College, and the six other degree-granting institutions in the area had a combined enrollment of over 54,000 students in the fall of 1994. About 8% of Cleveland's area workers are employed in the healthcare industry. The 10 hospitals within city limits include the world-famous Cleveland Clinic and University Hospitals. University hospitals, which began during the Civil War as the Home for Friendless Strangers, a hospital for wounded Confederates, was the first medical facility in the U.S. to use whole body magnetic resonance scanning and the first to use heart defibrillation. St. Vincent Charity Hospital helped to develop the heart-lung machine. The world's first human-to-human -human blood transfusion was performed at St. Alexis Hospital in 1906.